Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We are speaking the day after a pretty impressive Europa League win for Celtic 2-0 against Ferenc Varos. Jackie, we get to do a happy video for I think the first time in living memory. Um, you're yeah. smiling and all, how are you doing? Good, uh, it's nice to be here on the back of a, a good victory and performance um, rather, yeah. than, rather than trying to look for solutions and reasons why it didn't work. Yeah, it's nice to be positive. You and how are you getting on? No, I'm I'm glad too. I started to feel like uh, Jackie and I were bad luck. So you know, <laughs> so uh, anything's an improvement, really. <laughs> Definitely. Um, right, on this video, guys, we're going to look at yesterday, obviously all the positives, how far Ange has taken this team in such a short space of time, but also ponder what could be to come in the future and how good this Celtic team could be under Ange. Um, Jackie, just on yesterday, what what did you make of the game in general? I thought, um, you know, I thought they were good. I thought energy-wise, especially even second half, you know, at the start of the season, I think you could see they would maybe tail off about 60 minutes because they, yeah. you know, run them into the ground. And, and even when he made changes, then the, there wasn't real impact in the game. But now you can see, you know, there's a real uh, a real strength about his substitutions as well. You know, they're they're making an impact. Um, and I think that was the that was a telling thing yesterday as well. You know, even Mikey Johnson coming on in a different role, he looks totally different. You know, kind of freedom running running around. You know, you can create things uh, coming on in there. No, I thought there was a lot of positives yesterday. And I think the biggest thing was the second half performance. You know, the energy, the fitness levels um, were, were, were good to watch. Yeah, we know that Celtic appointed a, a head of sports science a couple of weeks ago, Anton McElhone. Do we think this is already signs of, of what he's, you know, implementing at, at the club? The fact that we did look much fitter. I thought Ferenc Varos tired badly in that second half yesterday, probably from chasing the ball for the first, you know, 50, 60 minutes. But you and I, I just thought Celtic, you know, created so many chances in the last 15 minutes, could easily have won that game, you know, 4-5-0. Mm -hmm. it's, it's night and day from what we've seen before. Um, and, I mean, what I don't know about sports science could fill Celtic Park a few times over, but I would say there is a huge difference. Um and it's just, it's such good, like Jackie said, it was such good in-game management to just, you know, keep the ball moving for the entirety of the first half. Yeah, it was a wee bit frustrating kind of seeing not sell, sell, not take the chances, but it paid off because of the amount of work that um, French Vass had to put in to even get near the ball. And then by the time, yeah, uh, by the time the second half starts there, knackered, so I could, could probably have played another game after that. Um, great substitutions and... Um, but yeah, as you say, I think I, I think they, they do seem a lot fair, even in just a couple of weeks. Um, I thought the way we played towards the end of the game against Motherwell was also a really good indication of that. And whether it's just new diet or new, I think there's a new supplement part in her, I could be wrong, but um, it all just looks a lot better. And um, I think, you know, the players are start, starting to really, really look as if they're, they're buying into, you know, the we don't stop until full time kind of mantra that. Uh, Postal we brought with him, so then no really really encouraging stuff. Yeah, and definitely with the subs yesterday, as as Jackie you know alluded to the fact they all came on and they all kind of changed the game. You know, um, Yakimakis came on and was able to give us a presence up top to hold the ball in. Mikey Johnson, who I do want to talk about in a second, Jackie, but he just looked you know lightning so good when he came on, so sharp. Um, Beaton came on and, and gave us that bit of assuredness in the midfield that you don't really get with Rogic because Rogic is kind of tiring at that stage. And even Liam Scales come on and and I thought he made a, a goal saving you know block or clearance you know near near the end of the game as well. You know very similar to the Ralston one. What does that say about a squad, Jackie? You know you'll have been part of so many. You've been a manager when subs are coming on and they're all just looking integrated and in, in what's going on it didn't take any of those players time to get into the game they were all right on it what does that say about the the squad at celtic no it says about you know the, they know their jobs when they're coming on it's not like they're you're coming on and and, you know, and just playing off the cuff they, they have mm. a a way of playing you know i think and just showing that he, he's got a way he wants to play and he's not going to deviate from that at all he's not going to change his methods or his thought he believes in what he's doing and um you know, and hats off to him uh, so far, you know, uh, how he's, you can see signs there. And I think there yeah, I'd spoke, you know, before about, you know, consistency, consistency and not just performances, but results. 
you know, I think they went away and, and won the way Aberdeen without playing to that level mm. and that energy. Um, and Motherwell, there was signs there of some good stuff there as well, but it wasn't like over a long period in terms of the energy. Uh, but yesterday, I thought it was. I thought they was they were excellent and got stronger as the game went on as well. The substitutions come on, make an impact, which means that the whole squad's getting stronger. So when you're, you, and that gives confidence throughout the team that you know you're not overly worried about not working straight away. We've got options there on the bench, and now mm. I, I do feel he's got that. Uh, Jackie Marcus, I thought he he's got a presence about him. I know he's not yeah. um, taking his opportunities yet. You know he's had a couple of little opportunities, but. You know, he's hold up play and some he's something different that, you know, I said many a time last season we didn't have you know, a number nine, a physical presence if there's crosses coming in there. Um I know we've yet to see him going attack and things, but I do think he could be good in that and it frees up space for, for other players, Kyogo especially, you know, and Jota. Mickey Johnson come back in, you've still got Forrest to come back in, Abada, you know, and that's that's a lot of good pace and energy in, in that line up there yeah you look ahead to Saturday now and for the first time in ages attacking wise he's got decisions to make because you've got Mikey Johnson now you're knocking in the door he's got Yakamakis. you know for me Abada is, is going through a tough period at the moment I would probably you know I had it in my head we have to wait for Forrest to come back before we can kind of rest Abada or drop him but I think Saturday now you and you, you could possibly look at you've got two options you could either put you know Kyogo on the left Jota on the right and play Yakimakis up top or you could even just play Mikey Johnson on the left Jota on the right and you could leave a bad on the bench you could and that's that's the it's the options we didn't have last season um and even there's a couple of names you didn't mention um you know Albion A is an option as well he was on the bench um much as I haven't really enjoyed his recent performances but Karamoko Dembele as well he's still got to come back um <clears throat> there's just yeah, there's there's options in terms of Saturday. Um, I would like to see Yakimakis start, um, but as you say, um, yeah, Mikey Johnson when he came on, I thought he was absolutely electric, man. Like, um, it was it was it's almost you know it's been easy to forget how good he actually was at one stage because he's been out so long. And I think having that kind of refresher was, I mean, came on eighty six minute, but the impact people are still talking about. It. So um, no, it's it's fantastic, and it's just it's what we didn't have last season. Um, and to go from having a left flank that was just Elianusi pretty much by himself to having, you know, um, to having different options and at least three good choices you could play in the left is is fantastic. And and that's ultimately that's that's what wins titles having having those options and having people that can come in and rotate and and, and like you both say, people that can come in and they don't need that much instruction. They can just immediately adapt to what the team's trying to do. So um, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Ange comes in for a kind of, you know, I don't know if it's a lazy narrative people say, but they say that he, he just has his one way of playing and he, he will just keep doing that the whole way. To an extent, that's true, Jackie, but we did see signs yesterday. For me, probably the most encouraging part of yesterday was the way we closed out that game. Fair enough, we had one moment when Starfelt did his kind of usual, and I thought Starfelt was good yesterday, but he did the thing we've seen a lot from him where he makes a bad mistake and it nearly leads to a goal. But other than that, you know, we closed the game out well. We were the team looking to score the next goal rather than just retreating deeper. He brought on Beaton, you know, he brought on players like Johnson who could exploit the space late on. So he does have options there, but also he's, I don't want to say he's shown a new side or anything, Ange, because I think that's a bit harsh on him, but he's he's definitely, you know, shown that he knows how to, to close out games. Yeah, and I, I do I do think there'll be one or two games this season that, you know, we will come unstuck with playing the way we do. You know, like um, Starfelt won yesterday or, or the goalkeeper getting caught with one, you know, getting a ricochet, which has happened already a couple of times this season. But I think his philosophy is that we'll go and score an extra one, one more goal than you and we'll, we'll keep believing what we're doing. And that's it is quite refreshing, um, you know, when it's going well and it's working fantastic it's entertaining you know I, I think that's a big thing is when the fans come away from the matches I think that's why everybody's excited after the game yesterday again everybody's up and looking mm -hmm. forward to the next match which is the way it should be rather than worrying like what's going to be on Saturday who's going to turn up you know what players are going to give up give their all um, now you're, you're seeing signs there of the backup players things players that you kind of not forgot about but you, you weren't really focused on you know, but they're suddenly they're they're back in contention. The Mikey Johnsons and stuff coming back into it. You know, and, and not having Forrest in the team who's been a, a big player over the years, and you're not really missing him at this moment, which 
which says a lot about the rest of them. Just on Mikey Johnson, just expanding what you were chatting about, Jackie, do you think he, he had a bit of a different role or a bit, you know, extra licence to go about the park yesterday when he came on? Yeah, I mean, I, I like players like that. When See, when they're different, they've, they've got pace, they've got and it's, it's their intuition when they're taking people on. When you have a player like that, it's like a, like a, an old-fashioned winger. Mm. Similar to Forrest, you know, if you're doing the right-hand side or left-hand side, but normally if you're up against them, they know, they know what they're sometimes going to do, just try and get to the byline and put it there. But when you've got somebody that comes into little pockets and turns and runs at defence, it must terrify them. You know, yeah. he has got he has got that change of pace. He can go out on his left side or his right side. As a defender, it's difficult to play against and it creates more space for other people. It attracts more players to him to try and stop him. Again, you've seen it, you've seen it yesterday, the pass he's gone through at near the end of the match. Um, I think it was Kyogre that had a good chance to score. You know, he slipped him in um, and he stuck it just past the post. So little things like that, it creates more space and it's, you know, for the, the team which has been crying out for that, you know, teams come in sitting behind the ball, suddenly you've got three or four guys that can do that and take players on. Jota, I think, has got better and better each game as yeah. well, which is which is great to see. Johnson is just a hell of a player. He just looks so sharp every time he plays. Um, the big question with him, as is always the case, is how long can he stay fit for? And, and hopefully now he's he's over his worst, uh, you know, his worst injury troubles, and he can stay fit. Um, guys, we've spoken for over ten minutes, and we've not spoken about the the bit of genius or the bits of genius from yesterday in terms of that that first goal. Um, I was watching a couple of Jackie's old teammates on uh, on BT Sport, John Hartson and and Paul Lambert, and I think they were actually struggling to sum up how good a goal it was because it was just one of those goals that was was just well, for me one of the best goals I've seen Celtic score at Parkhead in, in God knows how long. Um, you and what what's your favourite bit having watched that goal back loads of times? Just when jo when Jota puts his head up and sees the pass, that's it for me. Like I, I just I just knew as soon as he looked up that would be a really good chance for us. Um, just an absolutely wonderful assist. Um, I, I, honestly, it's it's um, I'm I'm struggling trying to think of a better assist I've seen at Celtic Park. Um, and that says all. <laughs> like I'm really really trying to struggle. I was looking at highlights of goals last night. I was trying to think like because uh, I'm not much of an anarchist about this kind of thing, but. I was watching highlights and thinking if, if I've seen a better a better pass than that leading directly to a goal. I, I don't know if I have. It was it was phenomenal and just the sheer instinct that Jota has, um, just the the technique that he's got. I can't believe that we've got him um, and that we could have him for under seven million quid is just absolutely it's it's unreal. But um, yeah, one of the most satisfying goals I've seen in in a very very long time. Um, just exquisite. It's that angle from behind the slow motion one when you just see oh, the ball get yeah. fizzed in. Jack, have you you got a better pass at Celtic Park you can remember? Um, I'm you can to say one of your own. I was <laughs> going to say one of my own ones, yeah. Um, <laughs> I went to Craig Burley when we, uh, against Rangers. That wasn't a bad the reverse pass. Be we better than, out better than Jota. I'll send, I'll send you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we beat Rangers 2-0 uh, at uh, New Year. The year we stopped the 10. Mm. That was the reverse pass to Craig Burley. wasn't it bad. But I think... I appreciate the pass that he put there, you know, the, the spin that he put on it. But I, I think you realise how good his touch was. Yeah. You know, see his first touch, to be on on the move like that, running at pace. And it, he's, because it, normally the, it would give the defenders a chance to get a tackle in. But his touch was so perfect. It didn't need to break his stride. It was, it was already the, the perfect position for him just to slot it. You know, the goalkeeper had mm. showed him the space as well. In, in, in that near post area um, but his first touch just totally made it uh, fantastic but Cause the whole the whole goal was, was spectacular because it's kind of coming over his shoulder as well so mm -hmm. it's yeah. it makes it even better he's not he's not really tracking the ball the whole way and he just it just hits his foot and it just stops dead and it's two touches into it. It's one with yeah. his right foot, and then another one just with a side foot into the net. Just the touch for me, not to take anything away from the pass, because the pass is incredible. But but the touch for me is just the the way he just caresses that on the run, as Jackie says, and the finish as well is great because he doesn't he doesn't let the goalkeeper get set at all, and he just puts it into the the corner. I thought it was maybe poor goalkeeping at first because he'd showed him, but I think he just didn't get a chance to to set himself. Um, Amazing, amazing moment, and I guess that's what those two just bring us, Jackie. That 
that extra quality that we lacked so badly last season. Yeah, as it it's noticeable when you're watching it, you know, because that although it would be a chance, normally I think that would have been a pass like that. It would have been a touch way in front of them, or you know, or, or possibly a sixty forty with a keeper at that point. Mm. You know, uh, or let it through them, or maybe just hit their knee and bounce, bounce through. It wouldn't have been a, a, a created chance like that. I think his first touch made that pass even better. Um, but it was just quality between the two, and I thought it was, was excellent. Uh, right, guys, I'll give you each a chance to pick out someone else, maybe an unsung hero from yesterday. Uh, Ewan, you can go first. Uh, it's got to be Tony Ralston, hasn't it? Um, I just thought he was absolutely phenomenal yesterday. Um, obviously, a special shout outs go to the likes of Cal McGregor and to Jota, but Ralston, I thought, absolutely embodied the spirit of this Ange Boss Coggle team. Uh, he was relentless uh, with his press in the whole 90 minutes. He was constantly getting at the opposition. Um, he moved the ball really well, I thought, and either on overlap, beyond Abada or um, tucking into the middle, I just thought he was absolutely brilliant. And um, we said it so many times, but he was nowhere near uh, the squad um, before the summer came. And he got a new contract. Folk were thinking, mm, not sure about that, but he's. I thought he was absolutely brilliant again yesterday, um, and and deserves a lot a lot of praise. I would say uh, Paul Lambert actually, one of your old teammates, Jack. He was saying how how impressed he was with Alston, especially uh, the intervention he made to stop uh, Ryan Ryan May. I think um, yeah. scoring for French Varas. So yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was brilliant. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I think um, his tackle, you know, as a fullback, you know, your job is to to come round the other side of that. Sometimes it, they they don't. You just kind of, you know, say, "Oh, that's a centre back. I'll get yeah. that. It's not my area." Um, you know, and I thought he was. I thought his all round game was good. Jota, I like watching him play, and I think he's just getting better. You know, his movement, his balance, his vision, just coming inside and. Um, you know, no, there's a lot, a lot of things to be uh, pleased about yesterday, and you know, again, is it, you're looking forward to the next match, which is what it should be. Yeah, don't have to wait long for it either. And um, Callum McGregor spoke about success bringing everyone closer. You know, all the players closer. Is that your experience, Jackie? You know, when you're winning and when you experience success, the team kind of feels a bit closer. Yeah, and I think, I think the important bit is that everybody's involved. You know, because you can have, as I said earlier on in the season, I think you had maybe 12 players he was really sort of counting on. But now, you know, that's up to 16, 17 players. And, and, and they're all playing their part, which, mm. and that creates a good atmosphere in there. Everybody's involved, even though they might not be starting, they might be coming on for, you know, 10 minutes, but they're, they're playing their part in big games. Um, and they're winning. And the most important thing is, is the victories with that. Uh, you know, and they've, they've had a few tough games away from home and they've, they've turned that and, and done well at Motherwell, Aberdeen. So that, that gives them momentum. Everybody you know, kind of ripped them off. So, no, I, th- I think they'll get a lot of confidence from that and a good a good team spirit in, in the changing room now. Um, just wondering, in terms of like team harmony or that kind of thing, you don't have to name names, but have you ever worked alongside a player where you just you don't really get on with them off the pitch, but like you can't help but recognise how good they are on it? Is, that ever, is there ever a bit of a tension? Can yeah, I? I mean, don't I? Hundred percent. You don't always go on with everybody, um, you know. But we are on the pitch there. You would sometimes, you know, you know I wouldn't socialise as as boys there. That you know, when I was out with them, I was uncomfortable with how they went about, how they'd ask for things when you're out in their company. But um, but you're on a pitch. You're doing a job. You're training every day, and um, you you, you know you know they're acquaintances, but you're, you're never trained. You have your group of guys that you. I'm still friends with for life, you know, that I played with in, in different teams at Celtic. You know, the early days with Tommy Burns' team to the team with him, uh, it stopped the 10, then with Martin's team, right the way through. I'm still in good contact with, with a lot of my teammates and shared some great moments together. There's other guys that shared good moments with that, you know, I don't send them Christmas cards um, <laughs> or wouldn't socialise. But again, the, the purpose in some guys just like going about their business, you know, doing their job, then go back to their own families and keep themselves to themselves, uh, which you, you, you grow to understand that. 
who are you alluding to here, Ewan? Who, who are you? Who are you trying to, you know, make out as a bad, a bad, a rotten apple in this Celtic camp? Oh, it's not in this, not in this camp. No, um, I just sort of wonder what that dynamics like because you know, obviously, there's so many of you. You've got so many colleagues. You know, you can't get on with everyone, but there must be guys where it's just like you almost you don't resent how talented they are, but it's just like why can't you just why can't you be as sound off the pitch as you are on it? I just wonder what it's like because. And I don't even get near a five sides team these days, so I can't relate to that at all. You know, you know what's interesting. See if you're watching the like when we score. Yeah, you know, that's what I used to watch and still still do. And, you, and it zoom rounds to the bench, and see when you look at the bench and you look at the subs, hmm. and you see the subs reaction, and you see the manager's reaction, everybody celebrating, and you see the subs reaction, and you see you, you see if everybody's with you. And there's a couple of games through history. If you look through, and you can see the manager going crazy. And the subs sitting there with his face tripping them, like we've just lost a goal. <laughs> so that that's what I kind of look at. See when I'm look, watching stuff now in the games and go around. So you you from now on you you start looking at that and take notice and go. Oh. He's he's not with the team. He, he's not not happy, bunny. But um, it's something it's something I noticed when I used to play. Uh, I, I'll give you a clue. The six two game against Rangers. Go and look at that. Jackie's giving his homework now to, to report back for next week. I'm going to have my yeah. eyes on that Celtic bench. Um, brilliant, great, great result yesterday, guys. Um, if you humour me for a couple of minutes, I've I've mapped out Celtic's potential route to the knockout rounds of the Europa League. Um, now this may get complicated, but I'm going to put some graphics on screen for those of you watching at home. So we're hoping Leverkusen play Betis Thursday night and then they play in a couple of weeks as well. I think we're wanting Leverkusen to kind of take care of Betis there. The way I've done it, even a draw and a win in the two matches is good enough. Um, we then win in Hungary, which I think based on yesterday is certainly achievable. You're looking at Leverkusen 10 points, Betis 7 and Celtic 6. Betis then beat Ferenc Varos at home as we would expect them to and we grab a point away to Leverkusen. Perhaps you and they'll rest their team ahead of a match against RB Leipzig three days later away from home. Big game for them. So we get a draw there. Leverkusen 11, Betis 10, Celtic 7. So we're three behind Real Betis going into the, the final game which is of course Betis in Glasgow. We lost 4-3 in the first game, so basically any sort of victory in that last game will see us overtake them and move into second place. Uh, how does that sound, guys? Realistic at all, or am I just going crazy in the house myself? <laughs> I don't know, I can see it. It's possible, yeah. Anything's possible. Um, I think the, the encouraging thing is, you know, that after the first few games, you're like worrying about not picking up anything to now talk about qualification so that tells mm. you you know how everybody's feeling about the team and how they're progressing as a team um, um so no it's as it possible you never know it's, it's said especially turning the home ties into you know the fortress again and getting the fans yeah. there the fans turn mm -hmm. up the energy in the stadium which you can see from last year it's night and day you know we're not having the fans there the same kind of I say it's the same team, but you know what I mean. It's it makes a, a big, big difference. Right on cue, we'll we'll move to the fans then. Yesterday, um, for me, just incredible, incredible support. Um, don't know about you guys, but I was expecting when I heard the games half three on a Tuesday afternoon. I was expecting twenty, twenty five, maybe thirty thousand if we're lucky. The fact there was over fifty thousand fans there at that game yesterday. Um, it's just questionable in so many ways how so many people are managing to get there, what, what people know. are doing. But um, you Region. didn't know. Region. But, um, but you, you missed a cracker. But just just amazing. You and I, I, I saw an article you wrote on the website saying that that crowd um, yesterday for a half three game midweek was actually higher than Barcelona managed on Sunday night against Valencia. Well, it's ridiculous. I mean, and. and... And Spain, well, Catalonia especially, they've relaxed a lot of their uh, COVID-19 um, sort of uh, regulations. Because I was thinking maybe maybe that's a factor. Um, I know, you know, Barca, Ronald Koeman isn't exactly the most popular guy at the moment. But, yeah, it's pretty phenomenal beating, well, beating Barcelona for attendance um, yeah. this week. It's, it's just, it, it says so much about the Celtic supporters. I mean, I'm trying to remember who said it exactly. I think it might be in Callum McGregor. I'm not entirely sure, but you could have put that game at half four in the morning, and people still would have turned up in their thousands. That's just the kind of kind of folk that we are, really. Um, if you don't can get away with any ideas, 
No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, I, it's one of those things. It, like you said as well. Like I was, I was skeptical about how many folk would actually turn up. But then you kind of see it, and you think, well, yeah, of course, of course, people are going to get their half days. People, of course, people are going to get out of work and out of school and all that. And um, I've seen quite a few of of um, the opposition fans trying to tag Police Scotland, um, saying, "Oh, the the Wains were at school. This is this is disgraceful." But I, I think they can get away with it this time. We had games at six o'clock a few years back. I think Udinese mm. we played, and I think Rennes as well. Or maybe it was Atletico Madrid, and there, the, there wasn't that crowd there. There was like there was like twenty five, thirty thousand. So I don't know what it is about you know the Europa League at the moment. Maybe it's just Celtic fans loving these new players, loving Ange's team. Just amazing, Jackie, wasn't it to to see that support yesterday? Yeah, and like you said, that it wasn't a surprise to me. You know, everybody um, complained about it, and quite rightly so. You know, because it's not ideal, but they still make the sacrifice. They still turn up their droves. As I said, everybody's been desperate to to get to these games. Um, you know, and miss the European big European games. So it was good that the the team done well uh, yesterday as well. It sends everybody away away home happy. And, and was there ever a game? The, the, Definitely. Was there ever a game in your career when you were shocked by how many Celtic fans were there, whether it be an away game, you know, a, a, a European game or a home game? I've got to say Seville was great. I was going to say that, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, that was pretty mental. Um, even when you came near the town, you know, we stayed about an hour away and it was yeah. just, you wouldn't have thought Porto were in the final. I mean, you know, until they were there. It was just green and white everywhere. It was anybody... Anybody that was there will tell you. It was just it just overtook the city. Um, it was just incredible. But I mean, it's always been the same. Even when we went pre season tours or close season tours to America, there'd be Celtic fans yeah. everywhere. You know, testimonials down in down in Manchester there, but overtaking uh, remember uh, Gary Kelly's with Leeds. And Leeds has got quite a well supported team as well, but it was just green and white, you know. It took every every stand that they, they, they were in every bit. So, no, it's it's not a surprise to me. Uh, you know, it's always been the same. Fantastic. And uh, on that note, where is the final of the Europa League this year? What city's hosting it, guys? I believe it's Seville. There you go. We'll, we'll leave it there. Um, maybe Celtic are en route to get to Seville and, and we'll all be there to, to catch up with them. Um, thanks, guys, so much. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to watch this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel and we will speak to you very soon.